same hymn book. We want one more, 393. Amen. 393. singing church.
pages back, 111. 111. Right, 111, that blue. And can it be? Yeah, man.
Six six zero. Six sixty. Same hymn book. Last one over here, then we'll change it up. Six six zero.
66. <laughs> Just one away from the other one. <laughs> All right, 66, please, in that same hymn book. All right, praise the Lord. Good singing. 66, here we go. Jesus has the table spread. eternally. Amen. Amen. And I don't think we'll complain about that manna in heaven once we get up there. Amen. Amen. Get away from the fish and the garlic, the onions of Egypt. Can't wait to get away from all that. Amen. All right. Well, uh, we're going to have the Spurgeon family sing for us. Amen. And then uh, preacher Spurgeon here, he's going to give it to us. All right. All right. Go ahead, sir, ma'am. Amen. Because it's true. I ain't trying to come up with something new. I'm glad I got in on something old. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Now, I introduced my wife. I didn't really, but I refer to her as Mrs. Wonderful. I'm pretty sure that was a prenuptial agreement that she made, she made me sign. But uh, uh, we've been running the country for 27 years. Uh, anybody could put up with me that long, pretty wonderful. Anybody that can leave a great home church, we're from Anchor Baptist Church, Dayton, Ohio, Pastor Mike Elliott, they're praying for this meeting right now, uh, our folks there in Ohio, and, uh, and they pray for us, but uh, uh, we left, we leave a good church behind, a bunch of kids, a dozen grandkids, week in, week out, year in, year out to come try to do like brother preached about, just be where we're supposed to be, do what God wants us to do, because we feel we owe him and we ain't got over it yet. Wow. And uh, that makes her wonderful in my book. 
Amen. She's willing to do that. Uh, it's easier for me than it is for a lady that has a guy in a home in her heart and, and kids and grandkids. I've been a gypsy for so long. I mean, since I was probably 18. So uh, this, I'm cut out for, for it being on the road. I love it on the road. But uh, amen. She's Mrs. Wonderful. So if you hear me say that, I ain't talking about your wife. You call her whatever you want. I'm talking about mine. Amen. Amen. Now somebody said, I guess that makes you think you're Mr. Wonderful. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> but then I thought about it, maybe by marriage. Maybe I, no, not really. <laughs> Amen. I've read it a couple of you that got a wife since I was here last, and I say to you the same thing I think of myself. There really is a God give folks like us a wife. You, as a matter of fact. Amen. <laughs> And uh, praise the Lord. God is good to us, isn't he? Yes. Amen. I've certainly appreciated and really enjoyed most of the preaching that I heard today. Some of it, you kind of, you know how that's supposed to work. Oh, yeah. But it was, a, it was a blessing. It was good. If you come to church wanting to hear from God, you will. Amen. And if you don't, you won't. Hey, come on. He's a gentleman. He doesn't force himself on anybody. Amen. But boy, I'll tell you what. He, he, the Bible says, what is man that thou art mindful of him? He's, he's, he's interested. He loves us. He's mindful of us. He thinks about us. If we only we could learn to think more about him yeah. with all the distractions. And the distractions are from a world that we know who the God of that is. Yeah. So we got to fight. And uh, we got to fight. And uh, so this is the kind of thing. This day, just church, a Bible believing church, it's important. Every service is important. And then it's important on occasion to do things like this, where we just put the cares of the world on the back burner, whatever that means, and uh, just concentrate on, on, on the Word of God, the fellowship of God's people, the singing of the hymns. And you can get going through the motions, and, and that's boring and dead. And, and it's good just to revive everything and stir it up. And I sure appreciate the, uh, you guys letting us be part of this this week. It's been a real joy for us. Amen. So thank you. And uh, now we're we'll singing. You ready? Wake up over there. <clears throat> Once I was lost in sin peace within to save my weary soul I knew not how but Jesus came to me and by his grace I'm free now it's different oh so different now it's different now since Jesus saved my soul it's different now since by his blood I'm whole Old Satan had to flee when Jesus rescued me. Now it's different. Oh, so different now. I went to church one day to hear them sing and pray. The preacher firmly plowed the gospel plow. He said, you must repent. So down the aisle I went. Now it's different. Oh, so different now. Since fetters held me fast, the die was almost cast. My proud and haughty spirit would not bow. But just one glimpse of him, it broke the power of sin. Now it's different. Oh, so different now. It's different now, since Jesus saved my soul. It's different now, since by his blood I'm whole. Old Satan had to flee when Jesus rescued me. Now it's different, oh, so different now. And now my hopes are bright. I praise him day and night. How could he change me so I know not how? But praise the Lord, it's done. The victory now is won. Now it's different. Oh, so different now. Oh my, is it different? Different better. 
Amen, amen. You want another one? Yeah. Anybody not want another one? That's wise. Yes. That's good. Now, this is in your little white hymn, hymnal. Don't, yeah. So I don't think we've ever, my wife mentioned that she, we've never seen it in a hymnal before. And uh, that, I said, I don't care. We're going to sing it anyway, you know. But you pro you've heard it. You probably sing it. It's a great song. And uh, so that means this. When we get to the chorus, you know it. So, I, you know, come on. I expect you to, to sing it. Amen? You'll get it. Say, what song is it? You'll get it. You'll get it. All right, ready? While walking down a memory lane of past so long ago, Old Satan came right by my side, making me feel low. He brought up thoughts of hurt and pain when I had gone astray. He wanted to discourage me as I walked along my way. He said, you're undeserving, cause I know where you've been. I have a record of your life when you were bound by sin. I know your darkest secrets that you would never tell. What makes you think you don't deserve a place with me in hell? Well, I heard the old accuser, and this was my reply. You're right for all those things I've done. I sure deserve to die. My righteousness is filthy rags. My goodness is unclean. There's only one thing I can say to what you said to me. It's under the blood. Oh, praise the dear name. I'm not what I used to be. My life has been changed. Not shackled by sin and shame, it's already gone. I'm happy reminding him it's under the blood. Victory was given me when I was born again. He washed my stained and sinful path and put new life within. No longer do I bear the mark that sin had brought my way. With happiness and peace of mind, praise God I now can say, it's under the blood, oh praise his dear name. I'm not what I used to be, my life has been changed. Not shackled by sin and shame, it's already gone. I'm happy reminding him, it's under the blood. I think we ought to do that again. It's under the blood, oh praise his dear name. I'm not what I used to be, my life has been changed. Not shackled by sin and shame, it's already gone. I'm happy reminding him, it's under the blood. I'm happy reminding him, it's under the blood. Woo! Amen! That's, a, that's enough singing. <laughs> you remember uh, Walt Ziegler, you've already heard that name. I preached to him a few times. And uh, he'd, get, he'd get to the end and he'd go, that's enough preaching. He'd just walk <laughs> off. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I was a young, young preacher. And uh, he was an old man of God. And now I'm, now I'm old. <laughs> Amen. All right, take your Bible. Tonight, today, whatever it is, I'm so confused. You know, I, I'm confused about some things. There's some things I'm absolutely not confused about at all. I believe what the book says. Amen. I'm sure thankful the men that took time and, uh, to show me what the book said. I didn't end up here uh, as a result of any spiritual journey. Uh, I got saved because I had enough sense to, 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 to acknowledge that I was a hell-deserving sinner. And a uh, guy told me, you don't have to go. And I went, really? What do I got to do? And I said, you got to believe on Jesus Christ. And I had heard about Jesus Christ all my life. And I, in a jail cell, you know, we sang in that song, uh, one of the hymns at the, old, at the old time altar, God Come In My Heart. I looked over at my wife, I said, the old time altar to me was a rack welded to a wall in a steel box. 
But I took a King James Bible, and that's what they gave me. I didn't know there was any other kind. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, there isn't. But I took that Bible, I laid it on the floor, and I didn't know anything. And again, I had no religious terminology to draw from. And I said, Lord, you and me both know I deserve to be in here. And I'm talking about jail. And he said, that preacher showed me from the Bible that, that I deserve to go to hell. And I, I know that. I'm working at it. But he showed me from that Bible, and I really reread it myself, that your son went to the cross to make a way for my sins to be forgiven. I said, Lord, I've made a lot of mistakes, but I don't want to make this. I don't want to miss this. If, if you'll have me, I'll have you. I didn't know nothing else. And uh, I had no clue what I was getting in on. <laughs> I had a glimpse of what I was getting out of, and that was enough. But boy, did God get us, man. I never saw this preaching thing coming. Never. Amen. But I'm glad to be a child of God, and I'm glad to be a part of this, and I'm honored to be here. And I ain't just saying that. I don't say that everywhere. Uh, amen. I don't. Amen. I'm a soldier. I'm a servant, and I'm humble. But I'm a soldier. Did you just laugh when I said that? Was it? Who was that? You back, old Blondie. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, amen. But uh, I'm a soldier. We go a lot of places. I'm ready to leave two days before the meeting's over. And sometimes. <laughs> and you just keep on. But, uh, boy, this is a joy. This is almost good enough for me to say, no, you don't have to give me an offering. <laughs> almost. <laughs> All right, let's keep going before I totally quench the spirit. Second Corinthians chapter 11. Second Corinthians chapter 11. This is fun. This is fun. Uh, we'll just, uh, well, maybe I should go there too. We'll go to verse uh, uh, 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, in verse 3. And Paul, uh, Paul says this. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 11, 9, 10. I'm a long way from public school. 10, 11. Verse 3, but I fear, that is the Apostle Paul talking to uh, church, uh, just like this, church like this, believe the right way, believe on Jesus Christ, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. I'm so glad God made it simple. I'm glad it wasn't multiple choice. I'd made so many wrong decisions in my first 37 years. If, 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 if salvation was multiple choice, I'd have got it wrong. <laughs> it ain't multiple choice. Amen. It's one choice, and it's him. Amen. And uh, so, but it says there, what I'm kind of like uh, focusing in on is the word, where it said, should be corrupted from the simplicity. That is in Christ. There's a gospel track, and I looked on your track rack, and I'm surprised it's not there because you got some really good tracks. Uh, but there's a track, been around like, well, longer than, let me think, any of us. And uh, here's the version, and it's called God's Simple Plan of Salvation. How many have seen that before? Yeah. Now, it's had different packaging, it's had different. Uh, colors and covers, but the track's the same. God's simple plan of salvation. Let me tell you something about this track. Uh, it was written by Ford Porter. I think his name was Cole Ford Porter. It was written in 1933. Uh, it has been translated into 129 languages. And uh, at, whenever I got this information uh, a couple years ago, there were over 660 million copies in print worldwide. Amen. Ford Porter wrote a track called God's Simple Plan of Salvation. He said, what's in it, brother? The gospel. Yes. Take your Bible, go to 1 Corinthians 15. Yes. Amen. A lot of good tracks, a lot of good ways to... To, to get the gospel across, this one just basically is the gospel as we know it. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 3. Here's Paul. 
again, and he says this. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 3, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. Paul gave, gave us a lot. In his epistles, he gave us, I mean, the foundation for a New Testament Christian living. And, but it ain't going to mean nothing if you miss this. So he says, first of all, I had a preacher say years ago, uh, this is my speed. I mean, a lot of people, I'm not real intellectual. I had enough sense to get saved. There's people with higher IQs going to end up in hell, and I ain't. Amen. 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 But uh, this, is where, this is where I live right here. This is my, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. I heard a preacher say that. I went, I got it, man. Amen. Amen. And there's other things, but they ain't going to mean nothing if you miss the main thing. That's what Paul says here. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. He couldn't deliver it for he got it, because the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. So he gives it, and here it is. How that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scripture. Not our opinion, not our take on it. Not Baptist, not... According to the book, we're Bible people. Amen. Amen. That's my first loyalty is to the Word of God. Amen. I'm not hung up on titles, labels. I'm, I lived through those years in a different world. I'm a Bible believer. I'm not ashamed to be a Baptist, not one bit. It was a Baptist that brought the gospel to me. It was a Baptist that invited me to a little church on the backside of Dayton, Ohio. It was a Baptist pastor that opened the bread of life and showed me what I was getting in on. So I'm not backing off on any of that. But I'm not hung up on all that, some of that other stuff like some people are. That's all based... That's all rooted in pride, man. I spent 15 years in motorcycle gangs. I'm past that. I found out that through the years that our biggest enemies were really just like us. But he's not like us. We're going to focus on him. I mean today and tomorrow until it's over. According to the scriptures. And then the verse, the next verse, verse 1 says that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day. He didn't stay buried. Not very long. He was busy when he was. Yeah. Amen. He wasn't resting up. No, he is busy. Thank God somebody is busy. We're busy in the wrong areas. Yeah. And Jesus Christ became sin for us. He got busy in the right areas. And uh, say, well, where'd you get that? Well, it says according to scripture. Duh. Yeah. Amen. And so we're going to talk about this morning God's simple plan. I mean, come on, the creative titling. Crea I didn't really take the class in Bible school on creative message titling. I think I was out somewhere preaching that day. Amen. <laughs> but that's the title this morning for whoever cares, uh, God's simple plan. So that's what I want to talk to you about this morning, preach to you about, Amen. Lord willing. Yes. Amen. I don't take anything for granted. People say, you ready to preach? I said, I'm prepared, to, I'm prepared to report from duty. What happens is on him. But I sure do want to be a vessel meet for the master's juice this morning, and I feel the spirit in here is very conducive to that desire. And so if you're saved in here today, you got in on something, and if you're not, you still, the, the door's still open. Yeah. Father, I do come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thankful to be able to do that, to come to you in the name that is above every name. Thankful for the day that somebody came and told me the truth and made me free. Thankful for the day I had enough sense to uh, 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 bow my heart, not just a knee, bow my heart to the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, for transforming a life. The Bible says you came to save people's lives. Amen. You saved more than my soul that day in that cell. You saved my life. And, and that brought me to this place with fellow believers. I've been encouraged and blessed and edified. And, and, and I purpose in my heart to go on for you by some spiritual strength that I've received in this place. And I pray that we do that for each other. The Bible says iron sharpeneth iron. And so a man sharpened the countenance of his friend. Lord God, I pray that Father needs in here would be uh, uh, met that uh, fires would be rekindled and most of all Lord if there's somebody in here who doesn't have the insurance that we have according to scripture that they'll end up in the right place this would be a great day to get saved it would be a great place to get saved 
pray, God, your will would be perfected today and uh, that you see fit to manifest yourself in a mighty way. We know that where two or three are gathered together in your name, you're there in the midst, and you're here. You're not playing hard to get. Forgive us for playing hard to get sometimes. We acknowledge it's the flesh that's fighting. Our spirit is yielded to you. God, I pray today that we would in unity pray that if there's a lost soul in here, that today you'd bear witness in such a way that the spiritual lights would come on for that purpose, person, and that the rest of us would purpose in our hearts, Lord, to try to draw nigh to you that we might be uh, just more grateful to you. And we can get, get a hold of that. We can do something for you for the right reason. I love you, Lord. Please help me to preach. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. We're talking about God's simple plan. He intended it to be simple. Mankind complicates stuff for its own glory. Uh, religion complicates yeah. stuff. Let's, let's make it, you got, it's our, my way or the highway. I actually, no. No, it's not this crowd. I can name denominations. I can name cults. I can name groups. And uh, they're wrong. They got it wrong. It's Jesus Christ or nothing. And God intended it to be simple. He didn't intend to make it hard. And it says this in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 3. 1 Timothy, go ahead and go there. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 3. And uh, Paul gave it to us like this. He said, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Now that ought to be your desire. Amen. In every area of your life, uh, to fine tune that thing so it's good and acceptable in the sight of God. And it ain't hard to get good and acceptable in the sight of men. But God, he don't miss nothing. That book says the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding evil of the good. Now when uh, brother uh, told me that there was a camera in every eye of every one of these lions, Amen, and it'll probably be that way someday. I read 1984 in seventh grade. Amen, amen, and, 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 amen. I thought, you know, I thought, well, the Bible does say the eyes of the Lord in every place beholding the evil and the good. Amen. Yes. He said, for this is good and, and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. And verse 4 says, who will have, now this is God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of of the truth. Thank God we have the truth. Yeah. Amen. We got the truth. Yeah. Say, these days you don't know what's true. Oh. I mean, how do, you, how do you know a politician's lying? You've heard this before. His lips are moving. <laughs> Amen. Yes. And religion lies to you. In yes. Hollywood, they, they, they never told the truth yet. Preach. Those people are so Preach. deceived, they think we care about their opinion on world events. <laughs> Shut up and go play a movie star. I don't know. <laughs> Amen. What a thing, man. Thank God we have the truth. Thank God we don't have to worry about being conned or manipulated. That Bible says, study to show thyself we're proven unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. Amen. Once you've got the truth, then you can proceed. You, some people proceed faster than others, but at least you're heading in the right direction if you know where the truth is. It is God's will. People I've had preachers say, oh, I'm in search of God's will. I'm thinking, well, read the Bible. It's in there, you know. It ain't a secret. I know a guy wrote a book, in, in the search of the will of God. And I read that thing. I'm going, yep, I wanted to sleep, puke. I want to do all kinds of things. That's stupid. Amen. And, uh, but it's God's will. That everybody be saved. Yes. The Bible says that. So if you're saved, well, you got it on. That don't mean you're walking the way you should. If it did, here's how you know that, uh, that God's will hasn't been perfected yet. We're still down here. When it's done, when everybody's walking in those, yeah. <laughs> then we'll be out of here. But there's work to be done. There's work to be done, and we got to fight a flesh. It ain't going to be easy. That's why they call it work. Because to accomplish God's will, to publish the gospel uh, to the whole world, you've got to stick in flesh. Every one of us inside of us that's not interested in that. Paul said, set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. And man, we got an enemy within. Quit thinking about everybody out there. My biggest enemy meets me in the bathroom mirror every morning. Yeah. Amen. I brush his teeth and it still don't like me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> But that flesh isn't concerned about setting its affection on things above. That flesh is interrupted in five things. All right, this will be easy. Seeing, hearing, tasting, 
touching, smelling. I went to public school 60 years ago. They taught us that, and that means I'm 71. They taught us those things in health class. Those are the five senses. Amen. That's all your flesh is concerned about is gratifying itself. That's not what God's concerned about. God's will is that everyone came to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, that no human soul end up in a place that was prepared for the devil and his angels. And this is how serious he is about it. That just ain't, ain't some idealistic concept. That book says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's pretty serious. Amen. Next verse, verse 17 said, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. Amen. It's God's will. Everybody needs saving, so why? Well, what did he do? He made it simple. Thank God. Everybody needed saving because we we're all condemned. Amen. Condemned already. I had a guy out, out in Montana. He said, uh, well, uh, at a church out there, he said, well, you know, you guys preach on how to get to heaven all the time. Uh, what do you got to do to go to hell? And I looked at him, I said, nothing, you're doing fine. You just keep going the way you're going. You keep trusting in what you're trusting in, you'll end up there, you'll end up there. Going to hell is easy. Thankfully, going to heaven is easy, too. God made it simple. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, uh, amen. I had a guy, I had a guy with me one time in a church, well, is there anything God can't forgive? You know people are just being argumentative to say dumb things like that. Is there anything God can't forgive? And I said, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. There's one thing you can't forgive. It's, uh, it's uh, rejecting the gospel. Yes. That's why he made it simple. How can he forgive that? If you never ask for forgiveness, you're going to miss it. Yeah. Amen. I'm glad God made it simple, aren't you? Yeah. Now, so, let me give you my little three-point outline, point number one. <laughs> I like that all that today. That was great. Amen. We started out like that. I'll tell a couple of your men. When we started uh, uh, our, well, the Bible Institute, guys, and I'm on federal probation, and I'm going to school so I won't go to a bar, or I won't go get in trouble, I won't rob a dope house, I'm just trying to learn how to be a Christian. Yeah. So somebody suggested, well, maybe you should go to class every night. And I went, okay. And those early notebooks I got, I can dig them out. I can't read any. I, I never wrote anything. I'm going, man, how did I even make it? God, that's why. Amen. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, hey amen. Man, help me out. I forgot what I was going to say. P oh, yeah, I got it. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. I got to. He does that. He gives it back to you, man. Amen. Polished, professional, no. My preacher was that one time said, David, don't get so polished and professional, uh, you know, in your, as an evangelist, that you lose the Dave Spurgeon God saved and wanted to use. And now, 30 years later, we can see that we're in no danger of being polished or professional. <laughs> Amen. But we're having a good time. Amen. So our preacher would say this. All you Bible Institute guys, tonight, he'd say this after Sunday morning. No, no warning. No, no warning. He'd just say, okay, tonight, evening service, Sunday night, we're having five-minute messages. And if you were taking Bible Institute, you're expected to have something ready. Five minutes. And it was an egg timer. I don't think I ever made it, but uh, I was close. And I said, the reason you get a time parameter is to learn the discipline so you can be of service. You go to a place, preach to somebody. Amen. We like it when people say, yeah, preach as long as you want. And except for some guys, we don't dare tell them that. I mean, amen. But, uh, but I hope I ain't never one of them. Amen. And because uh, I don't want to be a greeter at Walmart, I got to do something. Amen. But he did five-minute messages, and, and, and it was like, oh, no, whatever you thought you were going to do this afternoon, guess what? You're going to, you go, if you've got a call on your life, you're going to go home, and you're going to come up with something. Amen. My Bible teacher, Brother Hanstein, said, uh, you know, if you had a message ahead of time and already in your Bible, you wouldn't have to. Yeah. And I went, bingo, that works, man. So I keep something, and I don't ever go into a church without a message in my Bible. And maybe I'm supposed to do Sunday school, and maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not even supposed to preach at all. Amen. And maybe the preacher gets sick, or the preacher gets called to the hospital. And if you've got to call on your preach, call and preach on your life, you need to be ready to step into a pulpit, stand in the gap. Amen. That's called being ready. We're supposed to be ready. Ready always give an answer to every man. Amen. amen. And so, amen. God made it simple. I'm glad he made it simple. You might say, 
Well, how simple is it? Anybody feel inclined to say that? I thought I heard somebody. How simple is it? Number one, the Bible says, go to John 14. John chapter 14. I'm glad he made it simple. I'm going to say that a lot because I really mean it a lot. And verse 6, and it's a familiar verse that I'm really confident of that around here. And uh, it says this in uh, verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, if it stopped right there, that means just what it means. It means what it says. But because of knuckleheads like me and Randall, you know, preachers pick out somebody they can pick on that won't get offended. I got to wonder sometimes if I say something, I don't know. But I've been trying to offend him for 20 years. It ain't worked yet, so I guess I can use him. I noticed you moved to the back, though, Bob. I don't know what's up with that. Amen. And, uh, but, uh, amen, uh, it, for knuckleheads like some of us, the verse goes on and says, And no man cometh unto the Father but in case you didn't get the I am the way, the truth, the life, let me just finish it. No man! Yeah. And you might have made it into our midst today and said, man, I was never no biker. I never been in jail. I never was a dopehead. I never was all those things. I praise the Lord. I'm glad you're not. I don't cheat on my taxes. I don't speed. Mm, I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> Amen. I don't know if there's anybody who can say it. Maybe not. I don't know. But uh, I'm going to tell you what, buddy. We all got a problem. We got a sin problem. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And you need to be saved. And there's only one way. Thank God. That's what I'm saying. It's simple. There's only one way. It's Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, I'm glad it's not multiple choice. Like I said, I'd have got it wrong. You know, I've been, I've witnessed the people, and people say, well, well, uh, what about, what about, and they'll talk about Eskimos, they'll talk about somebody in Siberia, and they'll talk about somebody, well, what about, what about, and I'm going, well, listen, there's an answer to all those questions. God knew what he was doing when he laid all this out. He put us here in the age of grace, because he knew he wasn't out a chance at no other time, no other dispensation. I mean, now it's a gift. Amen. And somebody said, well, what about, what about? I said, listen, I can answer those questions for you, but right now the, the topic is, what about you? Yeah. Amen. And the thing is that when a person gets saved, they get understanding, spiritual understanding, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, that you can't explain everything. I had a guy in a prison. Where I was the preacher. He was the convict this time. I wasn't a <laughs> I wasn't a jailbird anymore. I asked a guy one time, say, hey, man, what kind of bird don't fly? And he goes, I don't know. I said, jailbird, hey, man. <laughs> hey, man. And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> hey, man, I'm going to confuse myself left and right here today. <laughs> hey, man. I said, what about, uh, what about this and what about that? And I said, what about you? That Bible says this in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. It says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none, none. That, it, I went, I looked that up in the original English. It means, it means none. This King James Bible is so hard to understand. I ask God, what part of all is sin do you not grasp? Amen. It says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven whereby, uh, given among men whereby we must, must. It's not a suggestion, friend. Whereby we must be saved. Amen. God made it simple. I'm glad he made it simple. Amen. Amen. Go to Acts chapter 16. I like this. I like these jail stories. I preached in prisons. I preached in prisons all across the country. And uh, I preached to the, to the criminals. But, uh, buddy, I'll tell you what. Every one of them COs that are standing around, all them guards, they need to hear it too. Amen. They need to hear it too. Yeah, just my, and I know that. And they don't like it because I'll look right at them. <laughs> and see that guy over there? He needs to be saved too. And they're like, yeah, and the converts are going, oh, yeah, he does. Yep, yep. <laughs> Acts chapter 16, look with me in Acts 16, everybody likes this, amen, about the, you know, about the jailer getting saved, let's pick it up in verse, uh, Acts 16, I think it's around verse 25, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Acts 16 says this, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed, amen, they had been beaten for preaching the gospel, they'd been beaten, 
Amen. These days you can't even say something to somebody they get offended. Yeah. These guys were arrested, beaten, locked up, have no idea what the future holds at this point, and they're not at midnight banging their little tin cup on the bars saying nobody knows the trouble I've seen. What are they doing? They're singing praises unto God. And it has the right result. It said the prisoners heard them. Amen. Wonder what they were singing. Jesus saves. Jesus yeah. saves. What do you think they were singing? We are singing all that stuff today. You think the gospel is an eyeball deep in all them hymns we've been singing? There's more gospel in those hymn books. There's more gospel in that collection of hymn books that you guys use. <laughs> Then there is coming across the pulpit in most churches in America today. Amen. Amen. If all you did was sing some of those songs, the Holy Spirit would get a hold of that stuff. Amen. We want to, you know, just make everybody feel good about themselves. That's a problem with Americans. They already feel too good about themselves. That's why they get offended if you tell them you're a sinner. Amen. That's why God calls old convict like me to say, You're a sinner! Amen. They say, well, who do you think you are? Somebody trying to help you. That's who. Amen. 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 So, uh, so uh, the, the prisoners heard them in verse 28. The bars swung open. Amen. Nobody left. That's the tip off that there is something supernatural afoot. Because let me tell you from experience, if all the gates swung open, somebody's leaving. Amen. Probably me. Amen. And so and we sang that and can it be when the dungeon flamed with light? I remember that day. Yeah. That's what happened. The dungeon flamed light, and I ain't been the same yeah. since. Verse 28, it says, uh, verse 27, And the keeper of the prison, awaking, awaking out of his sleep, and seeing the doors open, prison doors open, he drew his, out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. Would have killed himself. Yeah, over in chapter 12, when Peter, when Peter got delivered from the four quaternions of soldiers and those guys, they was locked up, chained down, two chained, two guards. And they killed them guards. When you got a charge, amen, in that economy, when you got a charge to keep a prisoner, somebody's paying. And this guy, the, the doors are open. He knows. He ain't going to wait around to be tortured first. He's getting ready to take his life. You got it? That's a context. Verse 28. And Paul cried with a loud voice. See, some people say, Spurge is too loud. It's scriptural. <laughs> it's scriptural. Amen. Somebody walked out of a church service and the usher got him in the back door. I said, what's the matter? He said, what's that guy so mad about? Why is he yelling? Why is he so mad? And I'll tell you why. And first of all, I'm not mad. This is preaching where I grew up. Amen. 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 I, don't, I don't share. <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't in me. <laughs> Amen. But uh, there's something to be mad about. There's some, sin has taken men and women and boys and girls to a devil's hell. And God's so serious about it that he gave his only begotten son, and I'm mad about it too. And we need to get mad enough to do something about it. Say, what can I do? You'd be surprised. Amen. He uses people that will give him the glory. Amen. That's us. The most unlikely candidates there is. Amen. Like that donkey he rode into town on. I relate to that guy. All right. That's a different message. Don't get me distracted. All right. Where are we at? All right. Verse, uh, uh, verse 29. Verse 29. Did I read that one? Uh, then he called. Okay. Verse 28. Paul cried with a loud voice saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling, this is the jailer, and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? That's the million dollar question. Right there. And, uh, and uh, they answered it and said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Uh, they didn't make it hard. They made it simple. They gave it to them straight. Gun barrel straight right across the plate. That's what God's simple plan is. Amen. And you might say, how simple is it? Simple enough, I got saved in jail too. And uh, three weeks after hearing the gospel with a Bible and I'm picking my way through looking for loopholes like so many people do. There ain't no loopholes. It's Jesus or hell. I'm glad it's simple, aren't you? And you might say this. You might uh, say, point number two. You might say, why is it so simple? Well, because it had to be. 
It had to be, let's face it. Uh, the track record of the human race yes. is pretty lame. Yes. Let's go back to the beginning of the human race. You got Adam and Eve. Right. Two people. Yes. No peer pressure. One rule. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Say, well, I don't, you Christians, you got so many rules. This thing started out with one rule. Here's the whole garden. Have a nice day. Well, we want the one thing you told us not to have. Boy, that is something that hasn't changed in man's yes. nature since. And I wish it changed automatically when you got saved, but that flesh won't have it. And you got to fight. You got to fight. But you got, you got, mankind begins in that garden with two people created in the image of God, and they blew it. Yes. Amen. Human government, the next dispensation had to do with human government. And here's how that turned out. Uh, it says in uh, Genesis 6, 5, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. We're getting there. Yes, sir. We're, thank God there's a remnant principle. Thank God we can still assemble. You need to thank God that we can still come together like this because we got brothers and sisters all over the world that cannot. And we need to not only uh, not take for granted what we've got uh, in America, but we need to take the opportunity, redeem the time, and pray for our, our brothers and sisters in Christ in other countries that can't meet like this. Amen. But, uh, you know, when God uh, kicked them out of the garden, left them under themselves, it just got worse and worse and worse and worse. And it wasn't a uh, government, human government wasn't the answer then, it ain't now. No, sir. Jesus Christ, the answer. Amen. Amen. Uh, there's a, a factory right on Interstate 75 between Toledo, Ohio and Dayton, Ohio, and I was running up and down that road 40 years ago as an outlaw bike gang member, and a guy that owned that factory is a Christian, and, uh, and I didn't know nothing about all that then, but I know that on the side of that warehouse, the side of that factory, in big lit up lights, it said, Christ is the answer. I found out later the guy was a consecrated Christians sending the gospel all over the world, and, uh, but it said Christ is the answer, and I'd go down the road, and I might be drunk, or I might be high, or I might be smuggling guns or something, but I'd look over at that night and day and sneer and say, what's the question? Yeah. Just mocking God. Yeah. And I found out what the question was. Yes. What must I do to be saved? Yeah. That's the question. And it's simple. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And not just here. Just don't add it to your list of info. You get a hold of it right there. The Bible says, with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. Amen. God made it simple. I'm glad, I, I'm glad he did. Then after that failed and I set the flood and all that, the law, the law was delivered. And that didn't work out so well either. They couldn't keep it. They can't keep it now. But America had decided how to, how to reduce crime. Just make everything okay legal. Yeah, the murder rate just went down because it's not illegal anymore. Tell me the God of this world ain't the stinking devil. So God came up with a solution. He made it a free gift at great expense. Not free to him. Free to you and I. Amen. Like I said, God so loved the world that he gave. Amen. But even as a free gift, Matthew chapter 7 and verse 13, the Lord says this, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth unto life, that leadeth unto destruction, and many there be that go in there. I mean, it's a free gift now, and most people miss it. And then it says in verse 14, Because straight is the gate, narrow is the way that leadeth unto life. Few there be that find it. Few Think about that for a second. Out of the scope of human existence, I mean, from day one to today, few, and you got it? You got it? Gabriel, can I, uh, can I use you for an illustration once again? Gabriel was, uh, was very, uh, he was helpful yesterday. So, all right, then here, turn around. Thank you, my brother. Turn around. All right? So it says, narrow is the way. Right? So some of you might say, well, how narrow is it? I'm going to illustrate that for you. The way to heaven is one man wide. Single file behind the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, brother. Amen. That's how narrow it is. 
Amen. I'm glad I got in on it. I I still wonder why, how God's so merciful. But it's so simple. Absolutely anybody can get in on it. Are you saved? Yes, sir. Amen. If you're not sure, raise your hand. If you know you're not, raise your hand. I'll change the whole message right now. We'll we'll give an invitation. But amen, God made it so any of us could get it, and a bunch of us have. And I don't know everybody, but if you haven't, boy, you ought to get it while they're getting good. Amen. Paul said it like this in our text. He said, but I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguile Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted through the simplicity that is in Christ. God made it simple. You know, who would want to corrupt it? Why would anybody want to corrupt it? Well, take your Bible, go to Genesis chapter 3. And uh, that, I mean, it, the answer is in the verse in our text, as the serpent began to leave, uh, Genesis chapter 3, and look at verse 1. It says, now the serpent uh, was more subtle uh, than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And now right there is the first question mark in the entire Bible. And I want you to, you see, it it is the serpent, that's the devil, questioning, causing Eve to question what God said. And that battle that began right there has been raging ever since. And that's what the devil does, and he's got a multitude of methods, and some of them are religion, amen, yeah. that cause us to question uh, what God said. There's a lady who got saved two weeks ago. I told your pastor about it. She got saved two weeks ago in a church in Tennessee I was preaching at, and the lady was uh, raised in Cuba, and she was uh, raised under communism, and there was no such thing as God. They had been taught there was no God. That's darkness. I got people that I preach for in South Florida. I go down there and preach in Cuban church uh, through interpreter, through an interpreter for 20 years. And there's people down there that escaped communism when they were teenagers in the 60s, amen, that knew about God and then got saved and they make great Christians and they're reaching out and winning those people down there. And uh, But this lady was born and raised totally under communism, was just told that's a myth, that's a fairy tale. And then her daughter got out. Her daughter got to the United States. Daughter's in her 20s, would you say? 20s, 30s. Got married to a guy. They got saved. Amen. Then they got grandma out. And they want grandma to get saved. And she's like, talk about zero, ground zero. Amen. And she came, and they've been witnessing to her, and the people in the church been praying for her. And, and my wife had some information that we had got on the road that was Spanish and English together with Dr. Ruckman's pictures in it. And my wife's out in the driveway with this notebook saying, see what this says? And finally she gave her the notebook, and the lady got saved. <laughs> and she couldn't speak any English, so she came back the next night. But there was some, a family in, our, in that church, Mexican family in that church, that, I mean, they loved her. They led her to Christ, and uh, they bring her back and uh, tell us, you know, because she couldn't tell us. And, uh, and uh, she, took, she opens her purse and, and to show my wife about the book. And my wife said, well, if you don't need it anymore, and she went, <laughs> She wanted out, she ain't giving it back. God made it simple, amen? Amen. Amen. Now the serpent, verse 1 again. No, no, I won't read it again. But I will point out to you this. And and you know this, that's the first question mark in the Bible, question what God said. Now, you know Rich Barnett. You prayed for him. I went down there right after the Hialeah church. Good friend, old friend. And and he told me something, and he might have got it from you for all I know. He said, the mark of the beast is a question mark. Think about that. The first question mark in the Bible was uttered by the serpent concerning God's word. You know, somebody asked me one time, they said, well, Brother Spurgeon, what's the first question mark? What's the first question in the NIV? And I went, who cares? I don't know. How would I know? I don't know. Amen. Verse 4, you're in Genesis 3, look at verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. 
Now that is the first lie yes. in the Bible, and it was given by the devil, by the serpent. And he called God a liar. Now remember, he's subtle. So he suddenly called God a liar. But in John chapter 8, Jesus Christ returns the favor. And so in John 8, 44, uh, the Lord told those Pharisees, uh, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you would do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. Uh, when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar. Yes. And the father of it. Now when the Lord... Uh, returns the favor. It's not nearly so subtle. Amen. It's pretty direct, isn't it? Amen. Uh, verse 5, Genesis chapter 3 and verse 5, and the devil says to her, he says, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as God, knowing good and evil. You know what he did? And, and, uh, we're not reading all those verses, but the devil knew, you read it yourself, the devil knew exactly what buttons to push. Amen. To what tempt Eve with to be wise and all that. And, uh, and he knows uh, to cause her to doubt God and go against what God said. And I just got to tell you, he knows all the same things about you. He knows what buttons to push. He knows what it's going to take. You don't know what it takes to get you out. Devil does. Amen. You better stay close to the cross. Amen. Uh, he knows uh, what, uh, uh, how to cause you to question the Bible, to doubt God. Uh, let me give you some real deep advice. Now, it's real deep. Why don't you quit listening to the stinking devil? <laughs> Amen. So, well, well, how will I know it's him? Because he don't sound like God. You need to learn how God talks. You need to spend some time in God's word. You need to learn, recognize God's voice. You'll never confuse the two. Amen. Uh, because God will tell you the truth and the devil will tell you what you want to hear. Well, I learned this on the street, man, 40 years ago. Somebody tells you what you want to hear, they want something. Amen. Amen. And uh, that's not what I want. I come to church. I heard what I didn't want to hear. I said it yesterday. It says, oh, I'm so glad you're in church today. Uh, but if you die without Jesus, you're going to hell. I didn't want to hear that. <laughs> but he didn't just tear me open. He sewed me up. He told me how to get it fixed. He told me what Jesus did. That's what we'll try to do if you listen, if you want us to. The devil is the one that corrupts God's simple plan. That's who it is. That's the answer to the question. Who would want to corrupt it? Sometimes he corrupts it, uh, the simple plan of salvation, by adding stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Everybody ain't a dopehead. Everybody ain't a thief, a robber, a killer. Uh, there's good, decent people out there that, you know, they're doing the best they can. And so the devil says, well, I'm not going to trick them into this or that, but I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give them a gospel that, but I'm going to... Uh, use somebody that, that, that convince them they got to add yeah. stuff. And the thing he adds is good works. Even people that believe you're saved by grace through faith and not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, then believe you got to work uh -huh. to keep it. Uh -huh. well, how can you work to keep something you didn't earn in the first place? Now, that's how simple we think. Yeah. That's as plain as it is. But, boy, I'll tell you what, he's did a, done a good job uh, confusing people. Right. And uh, so I had a guy one time, he wanted to contend with me a little bit. And he said, you Baptists, you Baptists don't believe you can lose your salvation. And I don't know what he was going to make the case for, but I headed him off at the pass. I said, uh, I don't believe that. He said, what? I said, I believe you can lose your salvation. He didn't know what to say. He went, you do? Whatever he had ready, it didn't work. <laughs> and then I looked at him, I said, I got some of you nervous, I can tell right now. <laughs> I said, but if you ever get his salvation, you'll never lose it. Yeah. It says in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, not of works, not of works. Yeah. Let work. any man should boast. God got to put up with us bragging on ourselves down here. Yeah. He ain't going to put up with it for all eternity. Anybody that gets there is going to know the only reason they're there is because of him. Yes. Amen. 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 That's right. That's good. I like it. Amen. He adds stuff. We're not saved. We're not saved by works. We don't have to work to keep it. We're saved unto good works. Yeah. Ephesians 2 verse 10. Right. Amen. And then so the devil will add works. Well, God didn't. But uh, then he'll add baptism. There's a lot of people that are fully convinced you've got to be baptized to be saved. And our favorite, our favorite example, of course, is the thief on the cross. I don't see where the maniac could there ever got saved. I got baptized. Did he? I'd have to read it again. I'm pretty sure he did. Did he? You might know. 
But uh, I tell you what, those are two of my favorite Bible guys, kiddo, because we were in the, you know, never mind. Acts chapter 8, verse 36, when you got Philip dealing with the Ethiopian eunuch, and it said there, and says, and as they went their way, they came to, unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, uh, see, here is water, what doth hinder me to be baptized? And the Ethiopian eunuch was a heathen from Ethiopia, and, but he was a Jewish proselyte who had made this journey by chariot, Amen to Jerusalem to keep the feet. And he's hearing all what they want him to hear to become a Jew. And, but he's also hearing other things. He's hearing about uh, John and, and John's baptism. And he's hearing about this guy that claimed to be the king of the Jews that had been crucified recently. And he's got questions and he's searching. He's honest. He's reading Isaiah 53 in Hebrew. We got the Bible in English. We don't even read it the way we should. That was, that was a good one. I like that one. I stick the old, stick that knife in right there. Amen. Amen. And uh, so he asked. It's logical. I can understand why he would ask that because he'd heard about it. Uh, what, uh, what doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. Listen, baptism's good. I like this. I got baptized in one of them. Portable baptism. Yes, I did. I was thinking while I was down there where the water lines are. Maybe I'll just look it over. No, I won't. Amen. He wanted to make sure he did. He made sure that this guy, yeah, you can be baptized, but we're going to make it real clear to you. Yes. Baptism is not what saves you. Amen. If thou believest with all thine heart, amen. Devil will add that. Well, there's people that will, would fight over that baptism thing. There are denominations that are so, uh, 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 something, there's a word, I don't know what it is right now, but uh, uh, so hooked up on that. Amen. That ain't Bible. So it, it corrupts. We're talking about the, the serpent uh, corrupting simplicities in, uh, simplicity in Christ. And sometimes he corrupts it by adding stuff, and sometimes he, he corrupts it by oversimplifying it. And that movement's well afoot these days. One, two, three, repeat after me. That's how we say it. But it ain't a little prayer that saves you. Amen. Every Catholic in the world will be saved if that's all it was. That's not what it is. Romans chapter 10 and verse 10 says, With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I had a prisoner say, what does that mean? How in the world do you believe in your heart? You know, we give them knowledge, we give them head knowledge, we give them facts, but you, it's deeper than that. And somebody asked me to explain it, like, how am I going to? So I tried. And I said, believe it in your heart would be to get a hold of this right here. That if every human being from the beginning of time till now was on their way to heaven, except you, Jesus Christ would have went through everything he went through for you. He had hung on that cross and said, Father, forgive him. If he were the only one that needed that thing says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Those are personal pronouns. This is a personal salvation. Amen. Believing in your heart is getting a hold of the fact that it ain't religious, it ain't corporate. For God so loved the world, that ain't a nursery rhyme. It's getting a hold of the fact that you had a need and Jesus Christ knew what it was and he went, to, went through what he went through to make a way for you to... That's what believing in your heart is. It ain't said, oh, I'm a sinner. Now I lay me down to sleep. Amen? And the devil, and a lot of people think it's just about that simple. It's not that simple. Uh, I know where the term rude awakening comes from because a lot of people are going to have a rude awakening when they lift up their eyes in hell. It ain't my crowd. It's good folks. And there's plenty of good folks. Let me, get, let, let me clarify it. America, if you just listen to the news or the TV or whatever, uh, you think we are the most... I travel all 50 states. Been doing it for decades. Most Americans are pretty decent folks. Hard-working people. You know, they're hung up in a lot of wrong things, just like we all were. Amen. They need Jesus Christ. And they need us to live it. Not just tell them, Jehovah's Witnesses knock on doors. They need us to live it. Wow. Like it's real. Amen. Amen. So you ever get a hold of what Jesus Christ did for you, you'll get saved. And if you're saved, make sure you don't ever get over it. Don't ever get over it. Amen.
Our text said that the serpent beguiled Eve with his subtlety. Subtlety. In other words, he did not appear to Eve as he really is. Yeah. Amen. Now, I'm having a hard time comprehending why this woman is talking to a snake. I also see that he wasn't a snake like we think of a snake. Yeah. Amen. Uh, exactly. And uh, I don't know about all that, but I know this. He didn't have no horns. He didn't have a pitchfork. Yeah, didn't have a tail. That's what a snake is, a tail. Where's the rest of it? I don't know. But... Uh, <laughs> If she would have, if Satan would have appeared to Satan like he really is, she wouldn't have been talking to him. She'd have been terrified of him. And I'm going to tell you, the same thing goes for today. It says in our passage in 2 Corinthians 11, 14, and no marvel for Satan himself he is transferred into an angel of light. He knows if he appeared to people today, in this day and age, any day and age, if he appeared to people like he really is, they wouldn't be running to him. They'd be running from him. Bible says this. Take your Bible, and here's why I say I'm almost done, and you know that don't mean much. But it might. You never know. 2 Corinthians 4, and verse number 3. Now, this is us. This is us. It said, if our gospel be hid. If our gospel. Did you get saved? You got saved because you believed God's simple plan. You got saved by the gospel of Jesus Christ. And now you've got, it's been committed to your trust, and you can pass it on. Yeah. So that's what he's saying. If our gospel will be hid, it is said to them that are lost. And we all know people that are lost. And some of us care about people and love people and have family members and et cetera. Amen. But if our gospel, if we don't live it, and there's no strings attached. You get saved, you're saved. But if you just take that and tuck it in, put that little feather in your hat and put a little certificate on the wall and add it to your little list of accomplishments and go about doing what you want to do, other people will end up dying and going to hell. And you will answer for that. Boy, I got a glimpse one day of Peter denying the Lord for the third time and the Lord turned around and made eye contact with him. Right? I don't want the Lord turning around to the great white throne while somebody's being kicked off in a lake of fire. And he'd say, why did you reject? And the guy said, well, I worked with Dave Spurgeon. I knew Dave Spurgeon, and he claimed to be a Christian. And he just lived like everybody else. And the Lord, that ain't going to fly. That's not going to be excused. Depart from me, accursed and an everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. But I picture the Lord turning around and scanning the host of heaven. I don't want him locking eyes with me because somebody used me as an excuse not to get Whoa. saved. Whoa. Good preaching, brother. Whoa. But if our God will be hid, it's hidden to them that are lost. Look at the next verse. In whom the God of this world, small g, yeah. in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Satan, we talked about it last night with Bar Satan blinds minds. He deceives people. Why? To keep lost people lost. Lost. We just simply referred to people that are not saved. God wants them to be saved, but they're, they're not saved. Not saved yet. He wants them to be. More people are going to get saved. We're not done. You can tell that because we're still here. Amen. If you're in here this morning, and we're glad you're here, uh, millions of Americans go to church every Sunday. Amen. And like I say, we're pleased that you're here, but I, we don't take it for granted that you're saved, you may be searching for the truth. Praise the Lord, I'm glad you're here. If you're not scripturally born again, lost would refer to you. And you might say, well, I'm not lost. I know exactly where I am. 1469 San Pablo Avenue. Even I know that. I've only been here twice. Amen. You may know exactly where you are physically. But you, if you don't know where you're going to spend eternity, you're lost. And Jesus Christ went to the cross so that you may be found. Amen. Amen. Don't miss it. You ever get a hold of the fact of what hell really is? Amen. It's a place of eternal torment and flame for sin. Amen. Uh, we went out to try to give a sales pitch to get you to pray. Nothing could keep you from Christ. You ever get a comprehension of what it really is? Our prayers that uh, God would open your eyes a little bit today and that maybe we could, uh, you'd allow us to open a Bible and just show you what the Bible says. Amen. You're here for a reason. Yeah. And if you're not saved, boy, today would be a great day to be saved. It really would. 
Uh, I wouldn't push it. I wouldn't wait too long. Here's why. Here's why it's so important. The Bible says in Revelation 20, verse 15, for whosoever is not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. Now, God's simple plan, it is, it's simple, but if you miss it, there's hell to pay. Literally. The Bible says, uh, Mark 8, 36, and what shall it profit a man if, if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And that's what's at stake, your own soul. Your eternal soul. People go bankrupt. We're not talking about your money. We're not talking about your marriage. We're talking about your soul. You lose it, you can't get it back. Amen. When you get a hold of that, that nothing's worth risking losing your soul, especially in light of the fact that he made it so simple, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You ever get a hold of that, you'll get saved. You'll get saved. We, we're not going to try to talk into it. I just will say this before I shut this down. Don't wait till it's too late. And, you know, there's people that hear the gospel. I, I got a message on, on bucket list and pe things that people want to do before they die. And I challenge people with some things that a Christian ought to want to do before he dies, like fast for 40 days. Right, Bob? Okay. No, I'm kidding. And uh, <laughs> amen. But I think people hear the gospel. I think people shop around. I think they go to church. They get different opinions. They hear the gospel and say, yeah, that, well, I wouldn't want to go to hell. That, that getting saved, boy, God did make it simple. Yeah, I, I'm gonna, I better put that on my bucket list. You better put that at the top of your bucket yes. list. That book says, boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. I'm planning on getting on an airplane tomorrow night and flying back to Ohio. That's the plan. He might have different plans. I'm okay with it. Amen. I'm okay, perfectly okay with it. Amen. Amen. Because I know where I'm going. Yes. And if you don't, I'm just, the good news is you can know. And I hope if you don't, uh, maybe you'll act on this thing today. Now is the accepted time. Yes. Amen. Yes. Now is the day of salvation. Amen. Get a hold of that. Jesus Christ died for you. He made it simple. You'll have no excuse to miss it. I'm not trying to guilt trip you. I'm not trying to scare you. My job is to deliver the truth. Truth will make you free. Yes. Amen. You don't need my opinion. Amen. And, uh, boy, let's all stand. Amen. And the message is clear. And if you know somebody in here that's not saved, you need to be praying for them right yes. now. Yes. And, uh, yeah. Pray for them all. all right, preacher, go ahead. God bless you, preacher. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A lot of you have lost loved ones. I'm sure you want to pray for them to get saved. Amen. Amen. Right. A lot of you probably need to live it so that you could deliver the gospel to your loved ones, why not? Why not come on the altar? Why not take this time? You can pray while standing or pray on your seat, however way the Lord lays on your heart. Why not pray for them? Amen. I don't think we really live it like we should. Let's live it. Let's live it so that they can see something different about us. You know, you... Some of you have been witnessing to the lost loved one and family member for years. But you've heard about some of the people in this room. Through their testimony, they finally got saved. Because they saw that member go to church. They saw that member read the Bible. They saw that member stay away from sin. How about you? How about you? Maybe that's why they didn't get saved, no matter how hard you tried to witness to them, because you didn't live it. Is the gospel hid? Are you hiding the gospel from your loved one? You might be witnessing to them, but your testimony, your life, could be hiding the gospel from them. Ever thought about that? If any of you are not saved, boy, we love for you to get saved today. It wasn't hidden. It was plain as day. Brought to the light. You heard it as it is. You couldn't have heard it from the right speaker today. He told you plainly. He told you simply. He didn't make it hard. He even got rid of the oversimplicity as well. Gave it to you straight and right. It's up to you though. You're not asking the question. 
That's your problem. You got the answer. You got the answer. But it's so foreign to you because you're not asking the question. Let me ask it for you. If you were to die right now, right now, do you know 100%? Without a doubt, are you 100% sure you go to heaven after you die? Maybe some of you are saved. We're not trying to retread you. But there's nothing wrong with making sure of your salvation. It's okay to get assurance of salvation. If you're not sure, ask one of us. We're not going to shame you. We're not going to say, well, I knew you for years. If maybe there's something you want to make sure, we'd be happy to take you aside and make today your assurance of your salvation. Happy to show you the gospel again. Feel free to raise your hand or just come to me over here, even right now, or go to one of our brothers and sisters. We'd be more than happy to make sure of your salvation. Again, <clears throat> if some of you, if some of you want to now lead your loved one to Christ, if some of you have a burden, oh, now live it. Now live it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Man, I, that was good preaching. Simple gospel message. And he left something practical for us too on the side. Man, that was good. Uh, I needed to hear that. Amen. You might say, well, you're saved, preacher. Well, I needed to hear that again. Make the gospel simple again for me. Uh, brought back memories, amen. And it refreshes me on my soul winning too. I need to hear it. Praise the Lord. All right, so uh, the most favorite part of the church, we're going to take up the... <laughs> I'd like to ask our ushers to come forward. I'd like to ask our ushers. Now, this is a love offering. This is not to the church. This is to our evangelists. So uh, write it out to the church, please. And then uh, we'll write one single check to the evangelist to make it simple, all right? But he and his wife really blessed us. Amen. They really, really blessed us. It's, uh, they're a big blessing to me. Uh, I, like, I always like to say this about our church, is that uh, I can confidently say this about our church, which makes me very happy. It brings me joy, like Brother Robert Randall preached last time, right? I am happy to say about this church, you always give generously. Um, our last speaker, uh, Pastor Mike Reagan, uh, he said, uh, he called me after uh, church, and then he's like, oh my goodness, Pastor, you didn't have to give that much. You guys sacrificed. And I told them this, my people, I know them, they don't exert themselves to give it to you. They gave it because they wanted to. Yeah. So he was very grateful. Uh, I know that a lot of our preachers did all the time. I trust that you'll do the same for this preacher. I'm not trying to force money out of your pocket. You know that. I want to say this to encourage you. Uh, you're a giving church. Thank you. And I want to say again, thank you for what you're going to bless the Spurgeons. I can confidently say that. Thank you. All right, so this is a love offering. And then we'll do our church offering at the end of the meeting. Because we have most of our people here, I want to give the best sum to him. All right, uh, Brother Daniel, will you open up the uh, love offering with the word of prayer, please? Yes. Simple. Father, so much. Thank you, Lord. 
Yes. Yes. That's good, brother. That's good, brother. No. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for everything you've done. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. Yes, Father, amen. Amen. So I got a few announcements. Uh, so uh, street preaching is still on this Wednesday, same spot. <clears throat> if any of you are interested, uh, just uh, you got my number, uh, contact me. And then uh, Wednesday service ongoing, all the other soul winning ministries, you know, you heard about college campus street preaching, people doing nursing home ministries, their own soul winning time as well as tracking. If any of you want to get involved in those things, let me know, and then I'll give you, uh, I'll hand you over to the person in charge of that, and then you all go out soul winning. Well, I, that's something you got out of today, I'm sure. Amen. So let's go out, get busy, win the lost at any cost. And then, uh, let's see, I, I feel like I'm missing something. Did I, is there something else I'm, oh, yes. Summer camp, okay. Now, is uh, payment uh, due date, I, I forgot the date, it, it's next Sunday, right? All right, remember, y'all, I know you gave up your love offering now, let's start saving up money again. <laughs> ne next summer, summer camp due date payment is next Sunday, all right? Please, all right, uh, make sure you pay. Registration should be done now, okay? There's only like probably two people or one that's up in the air, you know, that I'm talking with Sister Danielle, but it should be done now, all right? We don't want last minute things, okay? We've given you all enough time, okay? And then uh, don't forget the Euro trip, okay? And uh, look at her message on weight baggage instructions, please, all right? We're gonna do the most unchristian cold thing that you ever saw us do is that we're going to leave you behind over there, yeah. all right? We are not going to get out of our way after working so hard in the logistics and warning you over and over and over again, make sure you meet the dimension requirements of the weight baggage and everything. So look at that, please, okay? All right, um, let's see. I, is there other announcements that I'm missing? I have a bet. Thank you, okay, I knew it. Sacramento next Sunday, all right? So believe it or not, Sacramento meeting is next Sunday. Okay, and then uh, we hope that uh, if any of you can come for that one, I know that the sheet was not passed out, but if any of you can go, uh, I'd appreciate if you let me know, that way I can get an idea, okay? All right, I believe I covered 
everything. Okay, the monthly bulletin, I want to make a public apology. I've been very bombarded the past two weeks, so that's why I'm extremely worn out. I should have managed my schedule better. Uh, so just this once, I'm very exhausted. So the bulletin is late, so I apologize for that one. The monthly bulletin, um, we might revise it, I'm not sure, but Brother Robert, he covered my back, and then I think he already emailed it out to all of you, but if there are revisions or changes, I'll be sure to let you know. Okay, I think that's everything. I hope I didn't miss anything. Uh, let's start off with a word of prayer before we eat. Uh -huh. All right, let's eat. Father God, thank you so much uh, for the preaching that we've heard, for the Spurgeons, and then for the people here who came, Lord. I pray that every one of them knows, that every one of them counts, and that them being here meant much to me, and meant much to the people, and also it meant something to them in return, that uh, coming here was worth it, Lord, and that uh, you ministered to them. And Father, I pray that you'll bless the Spurgeons, please bless my people, and uh, bless the food and the fellowship we're about to have. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Uh, Evangelist Spurgeon is going to preach again, and then uh, we have a few specials as well after lunch. We hope you can stick around, all right? Lord bless you. Have a good day. If we don't see you, if you're leaving, go with God's blessing.